Hello students, welcome to session 6 of Climate and Adaptation. In today's session, we will continue the same topic of adaptations of animals to different climates and today's session we will discuss about one more interesting climate and that is extremely cold climates. So I welcome you to this interesting session and now let us learn about this interesting climate. Yes, extremely cold climates. Now students, there are animals that live in cold areas and they have usually adaptations to keep their bodies warm by layers of fat deposits or fatty tissues etc. So they usually take on the temperature of the water which is usually stable. Like there are some large fish and mammals which keep their bodies warm by excessive muscular activity and thick waterproof fur. So these are some of the characteristics of these climates, extremely cold climates. Right? So basically the polar regions present an extreme climate and these regions are covered with snow and it is very cold for most part of the year. For six months the sun does not set at the poles while for the other six months the sun does not rise. In winters the temperature in the polar regions can be as low as minus 37 degrees Celsius. And the animals living there have adapted to these severe conditions. So let us now see how they are adapted by considering the examples of polar bears, penguins and other animals too which live in such regions with an extreme climate. Yes, the first most common animal which is found in the polar regions is polar bear. Students, polar bears and many other animals such as seals, whales and walrus have a thick layer of fat called blubber under their skin. What it is termed as? Blubber under their skins which keeps their bodies warm and insulated from the cold means they protect them from cold so polar bears actually they have white fur too and they have this thick layer of fat called blubber too so this is a beautiful picture of polar bear and other special adaptations of polar bear are the white fur. The white fur of the polar bear is a good insulation from cold and also helps it to camouflage from its prey and enables it to hunt well both on land and in the water. So polar bears have white fur so that they are not easily visible in the snowy white background. The term what we call it as camouflage means they will not be easily available or they will not be easily visible rather from its prey because they become snowy white with the snow and this is what this camouflage property is what protects them from their predators and it also helps them in catching their prey. So to protect them from extreme cold, they have thick layers of fur. They also have a thick layer of fat under the skin. In fact, they are so well insulated that they have to move slowly and rest often to avoid getting overheated. So physical activities on warm days necessitate cooling in polar bears. So the polar bears always goes for swimming. It is a good swimmer. Its paws are wide and large which help it not only to swim well but also walk with ease in the snow. And while swimming underwater, 
Polar bears can close its nostrils and can remain under water for long durations. It has strong sense of smell so that it can catch its prey for food. So we can understand the adaptations of polar bears by going through these adaptations. Its predator and prey are unable to see it. The white fur not easily visible in the snowy white background. It has very strong sense of smell. It helps the bear to locate and catch its prey. It has long curved and sharp claws. And these sharp claws help it to walk on ice on snow. It has a layer of fat under its skin. And so this fat insulates its body from cold and keep it, keep it, keeps it warm. Then it has two layers, two thick layers of fur which keeps, keep it warm in cold weather. So all these are the beautiful adaptations of the polar bears. Other than these, you will be very amazed to know that female polar bears dig dense in the snow where they might hibernate that is they remain inactive or dormant during the worst part of the winter and this allows them to survive without food or water during the cold winter season even the fat stores of the body gets converted into energy for body to function during hibernation so these fat stores of the female body get converted not gets converted it's get converted into energy for body to function during hibernation and the cubs are even born in the den so how amazing it is so this was all about polar bear another well-known animal living in the polar regions is the penguin yes Another popular animal found in the polar region is penguin. Students, penguins huddle together in groups to stay warm and fight their enemies. Like the male penguins, they huddle together to protect the eggs laid by the female from the severe cold. And if they are exposed to the cold, the egg gets destroyed. And therefore, they huddle together. You might have seen penguins they always huddle together it is because of this reason that if their eggs will get exposed to the cold then the eggs will get destroyed and that is why the female penguins return to the sea in order to feed themselves and drink food for their chicks so this is a beautiful picture of penguin a female penguin which returns to the sea in order to feed themselves and bring food for their chicks. So, revising again about penguin, it is white in color and merges well with the white background. Not totally white in color but black and white. It also has a thick skin and a lot of fat to protect it from cold. Penguins always huddle together and they do to keep warm so these are some of the adaptations so like polar bears penguins are also good swimmers and their bodies are streamlined and their feet have webs making them good swimmers here you can see their webbed feet so there are other animals too which live in the polar regions like there are many types of fishes, musk, oxen, reindeers, then foxes, whales, seals and birds. So it is to be noted that while fish can remain under cold water for long, birds must remain warm to survive. They migrate to warmer regions when winter sets in and they come back after the winter is over. You know probably that India is one of the destinations of many of these birds. You must have seen or heard about the Siberian crane that comes from Siberia to places like Bharatpur in Rajasthan and Sultanpur in Haryana. And there are some other birds too 
like other some wetlands of northeast and some other parts of india where these birds visit or they hibernate so other than these animals like polar bears and penguins there are birds too right and there are other animals too so let us discuss about it yes arctic animals students arctic fox the canadian lynx the arctic hare are usually much larger than members of the same species living in the warmer climates like here you can see the beautiful picture of an arctic fox it has also the property of camouflaging means it can also change its color from its prey from escaping from its prey even arctic fox have large furry paws and furry ears and these furry paws act as snow shoes and help them to move in the snow easily the furry ears help to keep the cold out so these are some of the special adaptations of arctic fox other than arctic animals there are arctic birds too like arctic birds such as the ptarmigans have feathers which are up to their feet to keep their body warm let us have a look at it yes this is the beautiful picture of ptarmigan this is a beautiful bird which have feather sorry feathers up to their feet to keep their body warm and you will be very amazed to know that these ptarmigans stay in the arctic all the year whereas some birds such as snow geese and arctic terns they migrate to warmer regions during the winter and return only after summer begins to settle in but ptarmigans stay in the arctic all the year so there are some migratory birds that travel as much as 15000 kilometers to escape the extreme climatic conditions at home and generally they fly high where the wind flow is helpful and the cold conditions allow them to disperse the heat generated by their flight muscles but how these birds travel to the same place year after year is still a mystery it seems that these birds have a built in sense of direction and know in which direction to travel while some birds probably use landmarks to guide them there are many other birds that may be guided by the sun during the day and stars at night how amazing it is there is some evidence too that birds may use the magnetic field of the earth to find direction this is fact and it is not only birds that migrate even mammals and other many types of fish and insects are also known to migrate seasonally in search of more hospitable climates so that was all about the extreme cold climates i hope you liked today's session and you learned many things about climate and adaptation so we are done we are through with this lesson in the next session we will meet with a new lesson we will learn about the new topic a new lesson till then keep learning keep enjoying have a nice time bye bye